Hey, this is Martin Casals, also known as Martin the Moth Martinez from Lucha Underground, and you're listening to WNS. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> you're listening to the official Wrestling News Horse podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsHorse.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsHorse.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast or WNS podcast now being broadcast in over 45 different countries here are your hosts daniel heron tyler a bear and doug that's right what's up everyone i am daniel heron i'm doug and we welcome you to episode 299 of the official podcast for wrestlingnewsource.com for all of your information go to wrestlingnewsource.com check us out on facebook wrestlingnewsource.com you can find us on facebook wns podcast on youtube wns video and on itunes stitcher beyond pod player.fm and satchel by searching wrestling news source podcast uh yes you can follow the podcast on twitter at wns podcast you can follow Daniel, WNS underscore Daniel, and you can follow Tyler, Tyler, which great. Unfortunately, Tyler's not going to be here this week, but that's okay. It's going to be a two-man show for episode 299 of the WNS podcast. We certainly thank you all for tuning in. We've got plenty to talk about this week. We've got Raw, SmackDown, plenty of hot topics, maybe a couple debates. Who knows what's going on in the world? It's crazy, I tell you. Uh, we also have an interview with Lucha Underground superstar Martin Casaus, also known as Marty the Moth Martinez. So you definitely want to tune in for that. So anyone who's tuning in for the first time, welcome. We appreciate it. You came in a good episode, I think. Who knows? We'll see. Doug, how you doing? Uh, not too good, man. Not too good? Nah, man. Not Her- too good. You know, everything all right? Mm, I don't think so. No. No. Selection has kind of got me down, man. Mm. Feeling sad. Yeah. Feeling afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, I don't know. I'm afraid, you know. I'm afraid for women. I'm afraid for African Americans. I'm afraid for Latinos and Muslims. And I'm afraid for the LGBTQ community. I don't know, man. I feel like we let a lot of people down. Mm. I'm sorry. It's okay, man. Uh, I just hope that uh, we can hold this rock together for the next few years. And hopefully we can get this right in four more years. Yeah. And uh, I'm already seeing some very negative signs out in the world of, you know, what people are having to deal with already and this shit ain't even official yet Mm. i mean it's official but he hasn't even taken office yet and uh yeah a lot of i have been seeing a lot of negativity on facebook and it is it is kind of disheartening i would i would hope that we as a human being would be able to look past all the labels all of the other you know stuff out there in the world and just come together like dude we're, we're human beings we have our differences but you know are you going to hate me because I like certain music? Are you going to hate me because I like certain foods? I mean, it's, you know, the, it's, it's, I, I mean, don't know. there is, uh, what I think there is room to debate and to go back and forth about is positions on policy. Hmm. What I don't think there is room is if you don't think someone else's life is worth as as much as yours, or if you don't feel that someone else's deserves the same amount of rights as you, I've got no room for that, and I think that's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. And I'm really afraid for the people that I feel like we let down and what they might have to endure over these next four years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would love to be proven wrong. I would be delighted to be wrong, but I'm not so sure of that right now. Well, hopefully... Uh Hopefully it can be proven wrong. We'll see in time, um, but hopefully we can use this episode as more of a more of an escape from from the real world and talk a little bit about wrestling. Um, you know, kind of get our minds off the of things because I know it, it's been a crazy eighteen months, um, and uh, I'm I'm glad that the election is over with and done with, and now people can make their plans going forward. Um, 
and I feel like this episode could be really used as a as a way to, you know, I don't want to say escape because you know it's always going to be there. It's you know it's sort of like going on vacation. Yeah, you'll leave for a little bit, but eventually you have to come back uh, to the real world. Um, but you know, for everyone who's kind of down, they might be down, upset, or they might just want to hear about wrestling talk. Uh, you know, we can uh, we can certainly provide the wrestling talk, but um, you know, the selection has been a, a, a crazy roller coaster ride. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know that uh, not everyone wants to to tune in to hear politics on a wrestling podcast, but mm-hmm. there are some things in this world that are bigger than wrestling. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of lives uh, who, who are concerned right now, and. Uh, you know, I'm just praying that their their minds will one day be put at ease, and that everyone can just go about their business and do their own thing. And you know, I, I would love a world where everyone gets along, but unfortunately, there are people out there who just I don't know. They just they they think they're better than than themselves, or they think they're better than others, or they think other people are wrong for what they believe in, and they're unable to see the other side of things. So if you are listening to this show, you know, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, <coughs> just, you know, make sure you go out and and be kind to one another. That's that's the most important thing. If, if you see someone being talked down to, you know, I'm not saying go and start a fight, but let the other let let the person know that you're there for them and just be, you know, be decent. Yeah, that's that's the most important thing. Um no feedback this week, but that's okay. Um, if you are listening on iTunes, we would love to to hear your comments. Feel free to give us a review. Um, we are going to talk about Raw. We are going to talk a little bit about SmackDown. Uh, I didn't get to catch some of SmackDown because I was I was watching a lot of the uh, the political stuff going on, and uh, so I was you know going back and forth. I even went through the DVR and and tried to catch up on some of it, but I ended up finding myself switching back over to the, the campaign. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, my busy season at work, and uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately, because I've been working late, uh, I didn't get to catch anything this week. Uh, my intent was to... <clears throat> uh, I wasn't able to catch Raw Live, so my intent was to watch Raw Tuesday... And to try and get to SmackDown today before mm-hmm. the show, and none of that happened. Uh, I worked late every day this week, and uh, what uh, when I did get home, I to, especially Tuesday, I was pretty focused on the election coverage, mm-hmm. and uh, so I really didn't see um, anything this week. And uh, you know, I'm sorry if that's a lot down for people, but sometimes life gets in the way, and uh, yeah. You know, and it's one of those things where you know this was a this was a huge election, so naturally a lot of people were were focused on it. Uh, I I can't imagine the ratings being too high for SmackDown uh, this particular week. Well, I think that um, I I think I saw, and again, this past few days has been a blur. Um, I think that I saw that they did the best like rating for some like non political huh. like some non news non political type show like all yeah. that night. So. Hmm. Maybe I people were uh, using them as an escape. They're like, I'm not gonna watch. I'm not gonna watch the debate, or I'm not gonna watch the election. I'm gonna watch some wrestling. Um, so, I feel like both Raw and SmackDown kicked off uh, similar ways. Um, you know, since we were so focused on the election, you know, I was I was mixed in in watching Raw, and to me, Raw wasn't very wasn't very good. Um, there were a couple moments where I th- where I thought it was good. SmackDown was again better. Uh, this week again, you know what's what's the surprise? Um, but there are some. Uh, there's a lot of hot topics for us to cover, and there are a couple of debates I would like to have. Not necessarily like debates, but you know, get your opinion. We kind of go back and forth. See, I guess that's considered a, <laughs> a debate. Sure. But um, but yeah. So on Raw, we had the uh, the team meeting for uh, for their singles competitor male. Uh, for Survivor Series, and Stephanie was introducing them, having their little moments. But then she made a comment, basically saying, "You guys need to compete like your jobs are on the line because they are." So, are we now getting? If you guys lose, you're going to be fired. Because if that's going to be the case, I know who I'm picking for Survivor Series. Um, 
Well, it's hard to say not having seen it, but um, I wouldn't guess that would be a stipulation. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, I guess they could, but it it, it just it sounds like motivation Mm -hmm. instead of like this is an actual stipulation. Yeah. But although, aren't they like? Aren't, like, Shane and Daniel Bryan supposed to be on, like, Raw coming up this week or something? Yeah, they will be appearing on Raw. Um, But also, speaking of Shane McMahon, um, Baron Corbin is out with an injury right now. And uh, Shane McMahon is taking his place on the SmackDown team. Like, uh, like actually wrestling? He is the fifth man, yeah. Wow. Wow. Wait, so then, wait, why did you air quote Baron Corbin is injured? Because, it, you know, it happened during a match. Uh, or before the match actually began. He was supposed to have it's a match. It's a work or it's not a work? It's a work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, uh, during the beginning of SmackDown, they had a little powwow in the middle of the ring. And Corbin walked off and Shane went after him and was like, hey, dude, what's the deal? And he's like, no, I fight on my own terms. I'm, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Shane was like, all right, well, if you're going to have that attitude, then we'll put you in a match against Kalisto. So go out there and compete. Before the match officially begins, Kalisto does this thing where he jumps over over the ropes and rolls in and you know jumps up. Whenever he jumped up, Corbin just like clotheslined him. And, I saw a gif of that. Yeah, and they had a. I mean, they had a nice brawl, but then uh, Corbin did something, and he ended up like tweaking his knee or his ankle or something to do with his leg. Mm-hmm. And um, then Kalisto went after it and you know like did a drop kick while he was standing next to the steel steps onto the leg which you know crushed it between the steps and so he rolled back into the ring and Kalisto went on the top rope and and did a a drop onto the leg so he's he's out of uh survivor series and so later on that night uh Shane McMahon says I'm going to be replacing him and you know well I actually it was more of a Dan O'Brien asking him and the crowd doing the yes chant and he kind of went along with it so um so Shane Man's going to be the fifth member. Did I see something about? Yes, Kalisto? James Ellsworth will be the team mascot for SmackDown. Oh, no, that's not what I was going to say, <laughs> but okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, isn't like Natalia like the coach or something? Yes, they have all these weird. And she's like, carrying a whistle around now. So they have like these all like gimmick spots for the teams. Mm-hmm. The brawl doesn't have anything like that on their team. No. <clears throat> So what I was gonna say though was didn't wasn't there some video where Kalisto said he's bringing the cruiserweights to SmackDown or something like that? They they uh, they announced that on SmackDown that uh, Kalisto will be facing Brian Kendrick at Survivor Series for the cruiserweight title, and this is one of the debates that uh, one of the topics of the debate that I wanted to have with you. Uh, the stipulation is if Kalisto wins, not only does the title go to SmackDown. But the entire cruiserweight division shifts over to SmackDown. Hmm. So we'd be seeing Brian Kendrick, TJ Perkins, Noam Dar, all of them now on SmackDown. So that's one of the debates because uh, last week they had the announcement of 205 Live going to be on the WWE Network, which will be immediately following uh, SmackDown, right? Or is the, they do that on Wednesday? No, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. They're, they're supposed to be taping live after SmackDown. So that would... That would ideally make the most sense. You already have the the roster over on SmackDown. Right. Not paying like double travel or yeah. Whatever. Instead of saying, "Well, we need you on Raw," and then you got to go film two hundred five live uh, after SmackDown. So hop on the next flight. So the the question is: Is moving the cruiserweight division to SmackDown the best choice? If Kalista, so, so if and if that's the case, does that mean Kalista is going to be winning the cruiserweight title? Do you think? Are you asking? Is that the best choice in terms of creative, or is that the best choice in terms of like logistics? Let's is do this, both. <laughs> well, I mean, logistically, if they are going to be live after SmackDown, it would make sense for them to be on SmackDown. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Although they have less time, but SmackDown. Well, now they're like, getting a full hour with the two hundred five. That's live. true. They get their own thing. But yeah. if they're going to be on SmackDown, they have less time on SmackDown. Is what I mean. Sure. But uh, their roster, SmackDown's roster, feels kind of thin, anyways. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I could see that working out logistically and creatively. Yeah. So. And I think the cruiserweights should have been on SmackDown to begin with. Sure. Uh, because that's a special attraction draw, um, and it gets and it gets more people focused on. And now you're adding the 205 Live Hour. And so you'll have one or two matches. You'll have a match on uh, SmackDown and say, oh, the story continues over on 205 Live. 
and there you go. It sells itself. What's the start date for that? Like the 20... 29? Something like that. Later in the month. I think it's uh, towards the end. But um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how I feel about like Brian Kendrick losing the title so so soon, and I don't know how I feel about Stephanie McMahon just saying, "Yeah, that's fine." If 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 one guy loses, we lose all of our division. Yeah, I'm totally cool with that because they've hyped up for so long. It's going to be exclusively on Raw, and oh, f- you know, look at all this great talent we're going to have. And then they brought them, and nothing really happened. And now they're just like, yeah, sure, take them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and that is sort of weird, but it does seem like a flying by the seat of their pants type of deal, not mm-hmm. like a, like, uh, oh, we're going to have a 205 show. Oh, well, shouldn't we just put them on? And then it seems like, it doesn't seem like they, they did it on purpose. It just seems like they ended up there. It kind of just happened, yeah. yeah. They're like, well, we want to do this show, and this would make a great time slot for people to tune into the WWE Network. So let's just do that. Okay. How are we going to do that, though? How are we going to justify it? Oh, we'll have a magic survivor. I mean, I heard, I didn't see it, but I heard uh, Noam Dar debuted on Raw and was over as fuck. Yes. Yeah. Um, Obviously, home home country. Yeah. Country man and uh, got a great reaction from the crowd. Yeah. it was kind of odd seeing him team up with Brian Kendrick because Brian Kendrick is known as the heel right now. Right. And he came out all smiles and, you know, did the flips and did the tricks. But uh, uh, Brian Kendrick ended up being the one who lost the match, blames it on Noam Dar, attacks him. Noam Dar retaliates, and the crowd right. is, you know, for that segment, sent home happy. I know we've sort of been saying for a while, like, where are the rest of these guys? But Mm -hmm. if this was, I mean, if their intent all along was to hold them off to debut them here, it was a smart decision. Sure, yeah, I'll agree. And I did see a post that said uh, a lot of the stars that were rumored to be in the Cruiserweight division are going to be on 205 Live. So, like, Jack Gallagher is going to be there. Um, Well, Jack Gallagher, I know we have been talking for a while, like, what is his status? Apparently, he's clearing up a visa issue. Ah. And then he he's on his way. Tozawa is finished up with Dragon Gate is is on his way. Very cool. And so uh, I think Metallic is uh, finishing up as well. So if Very not cool. already, so that should be. Speaking of Tozawa, did you happen to see? Uh, are you aware first of the mannequin challenge? I saw that video that Tyler put in okay. the chat, but I didn't know it was a thing. Like, yeah, it, apparently it's very new. Um, everyone just stands like a statue, or you know. Similar to a mannequin, I guess you would you could say. Uh, they go around and film it and add music to it and stuff like that. But uh, I happened to see that uh, he was in it, uh, standing next to Hideo, I believe. So it was. Re- I enjoyed it. Yeah, it I saw someone cool. like slowed it down and like Steve Carino was there. I guess he was like guest training for the week <laughs> or something. Nice. And uh, he's and I think he's with. Maybe he's with Cedric. I don't remember exactly. No, 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 no. no. He was with. He was with someone else. I don't remember. Yeah. But you know, I'm I'm personally happy that they'll be if they move the the cruiserweight division to to SmackDown. I think that's actually going to help SmackDown even more uh, as far as the ratings. That's going to get a lot of more a lot more people to tune in. And there's a rumor going around right now because they're going to have uh, another matchup, and it's going to be for the Intercontinental Title, um, Sami Zayn against Dolph Ziggler. And there's a rumor going around that they're going to give Zayn the title, and he's going to go to Raw with that. So that would free up some of the guys trying to go around the intercontinental because the, you know the 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 roster is spread fairly thin on the SmackDown side. Right. So you could just have the main title, the tag title, the women's title, and then the cruiserweight title, and so that would get a little more of a cluster in there uh, for the main title. Um, you know, but what would it do for Raw? Lord knows. I guess they just replace it with the cruiserweight to sort of do a switch. I guess so. Um, I mean, when I heard that Zayn uh, beat Rusev to challenge to, to answer Ziggler's challenge, mm-hmm. I guess it's not really an open challenge if people had to fight for the right. Well, it was an open challenge. Sami Zayn volunteered. He said, okay. I'd like to. And okay. Stephanie said, well, I think it should go to Rusev, but if you can beat him, sure, you can answer the call. Okay, well, I think it's the more intriguing matchup of the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely fresher. I don't think we've seen it. Yeah. 
But ultimately, whenever I heard it, it just felt like, oh, they didn't want to beat Rusev, but they wanted Ziggler to get the win. So mm-hmm. Zayn's a guy who is going to give him a good match, and also it's not like beating a nobody, but we don't really have to sacrifice anyone we've spent any time giving any momentum to. Mm-hmm. That was my knee-jerk reaction, but um, I just can't see them flipping that title over to Raw. Yeah. It seems like too much. Maybe they'll flip it over and then have a unification match. Unification title between the U.S. and Intercontinental. Who man, wrestling's so weird right now. Who who knows what could happen? <laughs> yeah, it, it it this whole year has been insane, and uh, it was just announced that uh, that the Royal Rumble is going to have a special start time. So it looks like that's going to be four hours long. I sort of expected that though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, I wasn't. I was like, really? Like they're they're extending it? And then I was then once. Uh, Tyler was like, well, yeah, it's one of the big four. I was like, yeah, that does make sense. And they have been doing it for SummerSlam. And uh, so I guess it is to be expected. And with that, I'd really like to see a 40 man Royal Rumble. Like, I would, I know it's a lot, but I feel like they could use the extra 10 for the surprises. And I mean, that's what I think. Like, I think if you're going to do 40, the 10 go to like, returns or like mm-hmm. one-offs or surprises and not just like 10 more dudes from like wherever yeah and you give a, a couple of nxt stars there's a, a rumor going around that a particular nxt star is going to be in the royal rumble um there's talk that uh who's the i'm so this week i've been so disconnected from the internet like what who is the rumor to go uh or, or, supposedly uh the rumor is samoa joe okay which I'd be that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd be excited to see that. Um, maybe they'll throw in a cruiserweight or two in there. That's why I think doing doing a 40, 40 man would be just fine because you can have a couple NXT guys, a couple cruiserweights, and then you can have four or five surprises uh, and two or three returns, and right. you know that that covers the the extra ten. Um, and also, I don't know how WWE feels about Alberto Del Rio being the only person who's ever won a forty man Royal Rumble. So maybe they would want to say, oh, well, look who else won. Sort of like, hey, look at all the people who's won, entered at, what was it, number one or number 30? Which was the one that... Both, really. Yeah. Well, isn't it like the same? No, I think more people have won it. 27 is the number that like, has the most wins, I think. Yeah, but it was... I'm referring to Chris Benoit, where they would only say, oh... Two men have, I think it was like two men have won at number 30 and two men have won at number one, but they would only show Shawn Michaels or something along those lines. I think that was what it was. I don't remember Um, what what spot he was in. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, um, yeah, I'd like to see a 40 man Royal Rumble. Who knows how, like I said, who knows how the WWE feels about it. Um, maybe we'll get that announcement a little bit later on. I would like, I would love to see that. Um, I'm just looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm good with that. 40 man. Mm-hmm. Got four hours. What else? <laughs> what else you got to do? Um, we were talking about the cruiserweights, uh, and uh, <laughs> one of the cruiserweights that's in a little bit of hot water at the moment, Sin Cara, uh, got into a little scuffle with uh, Chris Jericho over their uh, European tour. That's what I heard. Had a little incident on the uh, on the bus, making some noises, and people were asking him to silence himself. And he basically told Jericho, "Go fuck yourself, or fuck off." I forget what the uh, exact terminology he used was. I mean, those are relatively close enough. Yeah, the same thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, Jericho didn't take too kindly to it. And there's the statement that I've read. Was that uh, Sin Cara threw a punch, missed. Um, they were pulled apart. Sin Cara's hand got close to Jericho, and Jericho bit his hand. That's what I heard too. <laughs> so, um, no other, like you know, no suspensions. Probably a fine, but well, you know, I thought that I heard something about like they're making him get like anger management or something. Yes, Sin Cara is going to have to take anger management, but he, I don't believe he's going to have to miss any any time from the ring um probably be fined like dude come on it's, that's like your third fight now Sheamus and it was a gotch 
Oh yeah. my gosh. And now, Supposedly and now he's Chris undefeated. <laughs> I mean, Hunica like to throw those hands. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, if there's one uh, one wrestler you don't want to fight, it's probably Sin Cara. He's got some. You would, uh, you, you would think Vince would like. You'd think he'd pop be for that it. shit. He, yeah, he likes that like like legitimate tough guy shit. You think mm-hmm. he like Sin Cara be getting pushed to the stars right now? <laughs> And go out there and just have a shoot fight with everybody. She can bring yeah. back Brawl for All. Yeah. <laughs> but Unico whoop everyone's ass. Yeah. For round one be uh, uh, Unico and uh, and Sheamus. Second match will be Simon Gotch. And then Chris Jericho, if he makes it. To well, the we already round. know you beat those guys. I want to see who else he beats. <laughs> Who'd you put in there first? Against Hunico? Yeah. I, I definitely, if they're going to do Brawl for All, I definitely want Hunico in there. <laughs> and. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. You seen them put up a? You think it put up a fight? I do want to see him fight Jericho just because I'm intrigued by the way Jericho like stands up to like. Supposedly he had a thing with Goldberg. He had the thing with Lesnar. Goldberg. I did not supposedly hear about that. Supposedly him and Goldberg got into it. Wow. So I'm sort of intrigued by Jericho not backing down from big guys. <laughs> so I definitely do want to see that fight play out, but. uh that's sort of a wacky answer because the the altercation just happened. So mm-hmm. try to think of who else. Who's been in fights lately? <laughs> Not just who's been in fights. I want to. I mean, I wonder who will put up a good fight. I can't think of anybody with any. Oh, maybe like a Gable. Let's like he's got amateur credentials. Oh, there you go. Yeah, let's put the wrestler up against. I don't put him know. in the lion's den. There you go. Bring back that match. That's that's it. Book it. <laughs> Gable versus Hunica. That's what I want to see. <laughs> the the question for this week's episode: Who would you want to have fight Unico, aka Sin Cara, in a brawl for all Lions Den, whatever type of match? I mean, I would. I assume he's just a brawler. I don't know if he's got any like boxing experience or anything, but yeah, Gable's got that amateur wrestling background. So mm-hmm. We'll see. Olympic athlete. There. We, we won't see you, but we won't see we, it. We'll we never we see that. See right. But that'd be cool. If we did. Fantasy booking there. Um, let's see what else was there to talk about. We got to see uh, Rich Swan and Sin Cara defeat Brian Kendrick and Noam Dar. We already talked about that. Got a Goldberg video package, a Brock Lesnar video package. Um, they had a tag team Survivor Series meeting for Raw, where um, the New Day. Basically reenacted Braveheart. Her can... shit was long. Oh my god, it was so bad. It was so poorly written. Whoever was in charge of that segment, dude, got to shorten that up. Um, I mean, the crowd was hot for parts of it, but it was bad. Same with, same with the women's segment. They had another powwow meeting where they're all talking, and the crowd just overtook it. Um, they were singing the um, "Do You Want to Be My Girl." Hey, oh, Bailey. Bailey. Yeah. I'm talking for a long time. Like, well, at least it was for someone in the ring. Yes. <laughs> it was. And even Bailey tried to be like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm super excited. You to- guys are going to get me in trouble. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, she would do it. And- I'm not supposed to be over right now. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be here, but let me tell you, hey, <laughs> Bailey. She's like, oh my gosh, this is insane. And then, um, then they brought out Sasha. The crowd's still doing it, and uh, you know Charlotte's trying to get them to boo, and they won't do it. And um, Sasha finally gets on the microphone and just be like, "Would you be my girl?" And the crowd goes nuts. And then they finally calm down. Um, so, I mean, it was kind of a funny moment because I'm sitting there going, "Oh my gosh, this crowd is, you know, unstoppable. They're just mm-hmm. not gonna. They're just not gonna. They're gonna not gonna stop singing, and uh, and." They're in love with Bailey apparently, and they want to know if uh, if they'll be if she'll be their girl. Which she did respond uh, after Raw. She posted a picture and held up a sign that was like, "I'll always be your girl." Cool. Yeah, yeah nice little moment. But that segment was rough as well, like uh, because they brought out Nia Jax, they brought out Alicia Fox, and Michael Cole was conducting the whole thing instead of Stephanie or, or Mick Foley, which Mick Foley wasn't there this week. Um, so they didn't have Stephanie do it. They had Michael Cole, who was so beloved with the crowd. And uh, he was like, Alicia, you have a bad history with Nia Jax. Are you all going to be able to, you know, coexist together? And she was like, well, 
if Brad and Angelina can coexist after their divorce, I'm a survivor. Like, it was weird. It was, mm. I don't know if she forgot something or if it was just actually written that way. Right. Either way, it was bad. Um, and then Charlotte did a, a, a false fifth person saying, oh, you know, the fifth person is just taking me to my limits as a champion and showing me what wrestling, you know, what it means to be a champion, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the fifth person is Dana Brooke. And then Michael Cole's standing in there. He's like, no, no, that's not right. It's this person. Dun, 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 you know, like the, right. the timing was off and that uh, was just, it was bad. But at least we found out that the crowd wants Bailey to be their girl. Um, I don't like how the story of all the Survivor Series, like multi-person matches, are that none of the teams get along. Can we coexist? Um, I mean, if, I, if they're going to do that for one of the matches, fine. But yeah, I don't know. And it's not just like one side of all of the matches. It's like all the sides of all the matches. Mm-hmm. It's like let's to let's take all the people who are feuding right now and throw them in together. Rather than, oh, no, these guys actually get along. These guys would do well as a unit. Let's put them in the match. Well, I mean, how they used to do it was face heel dynamic with people that are feuding like on opposite sides. Mm-hmm. I understand that's more difficult, more challenging to do with a brand split, but I don't know. Yeah. They could have at least done like all heels and faces on. Yeah. And, you know, the to, to start the show, obviously it's to make the main event for that night. Um where Stephanie McMahon was like, all right, look, I know you guys hate each other right now. Y'all probably aren't going to do well, so I'm going to let you guys blow off the steam. You're going to have a fatal five-way match. Get it all out of your system so that y'all get, you guys can focus on taking down SmackDown. So they're at least trying in some sense yeah. to, to get there to be unity, but I don't think it's going to work. Uh, and sim- similar to the, uh, the women's match um, that followed this train wreck of a session, or a segment, uh, it was Bailey and Sasha and Alicia Fox. Uh, they end up defeating uh, Charlotte, Nia Jax, and Dana Brooke. So, would Bailey get the win? She got the pin. She so. even tag along to counteract Natalia or something? I don't I mean, know. I know she's not the, the coach or whatever, but yeah. is she going to be hanging out? No word yet. Hmm. No mention. See, that's one of the things. Like, SmackDown's having fun with it. Like, you're going to be a coach, and you're going to be our mascot. Like, there, it, it seems like they're trying to have a little fun with it even though it's not that great of an idea yeah it's something they're doing something out there um after the uh the tag team powwow um gold dust was talking to our truth and our truth surprised um gold dust by saying hey i gave up our spot in the survivor series tag match and gold dust was like what are you talking about he was like yeah i got this timeshare and we get to go to Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico, and it's going to be awesome. And he's like, but why would you give up our spot? That's what we've been waiting for. And he was like, well, I was going to surprise you, but I was going to mention it when we were out on, on stage or whatever, but, you know, just never really came up. And so uh, they ended up having a match with the Shining Stars. The crowd wasn't into it because, you know, we haven't seen enough of the Shining Stars, and, uh, you know, it's the golden truth. They do their own thing, and... Uh, the Shining Stars ended up getting the victory, so there was that. Um, uh, earlier in the night, Gallows and Anderson defeated the New Day. Of course, it was a non-title match, so um, you know, whatever. So, oh, they're gonna do like a multi-man match after Survivor Series for the tag titles, aren't they? Because don't don't Sheamus and Cesaro have a? Uh... Mm-hmm. They do. Yeah, I can see that happening. Yikes. Um, then we saw Sami Zayn defeat Rusev <clears throat> to earn the right to face Dolph Ziggler. Um, I don't really know how I feel about that. Like, I was kind of hoping they would try and keep Rusev a little strong. But on the same end, I'm tired of seeing Sami Zayn lose. So I don't know where to feel. Well, How to feel. I should rephrase that. How to feel. I mean, if Ziggler's winning, it should be Zayn. Mm-hmm. And I get that. I mean, I get where you're coming from. I maybe the answer is that Zayn wrestles somebody else, so that Rusev doesn't have to. Was it pretty clean? Or there was 
Just straight up, he just straight oh, up beat him. I don't remember. Oh, what it was, Rusev was up on the top rope. He wasn't standing on it, but he was, you know, he was up on the corner. Um, and Zayn gave him a haluva kick, and he fell off onto the mat, and uh, he got the pin. Oh, okay, I thought we were going to say count out. But, um, like, it looked like he was about to leap off, like he was getting in the position to jump, and uh, and Zayn caught him with a haluva kick. Uh, Rusev fell fell off uh, onto the mat, and then uh, uh, Zayn got the pin. I mean, ultimately, I think it's the right decision just because I think it's a more intriguing matchup and a fresher matchup, and mm. um, those guys will probably put on a good a good matchup. Yeah, which well, not to take anything away from Rusev. No, no, no. he's on fire as yeah. well. Well, we sort of been there, done that with Rusev and Ziggler. Mm-hmm. Rusev crush. Um, one thing that was pretty funny about that, um, before the matchup, Lana went out to cut her promo and she's gotten so in the routine of it that she was like, now Americans rise oh, really? and they're in Scotland. So and the crowd, yeah, give her shit. the crowd just started, oh, they started chanting Scotland and yeah, they were giving her crap all over it. Um, main event, Kevin Owens, Braun Strowman, Chris Jericho, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Um, fatal five way match, no implications, just venting all their frustrations out or whatever. Let me guess. Guess away. No finish. It was a finish. Oh, okay, go ahead, tell me. Uh Kevin Owens defeats everybody by penning Chris Jericho. Hmm. It wasn't intentional. He oh, what was it? Um they took out Braun. Jericho was out. Uh, I think from a spear, I think. I forget I forget how the official ending was, but Kevin Owens got hit and he did that little thing where he like he stands and he's wobbly and then he falls back and he lands on Jericho and Jericho gets the gets the pin. Or or he pins Jericho, sorry. Gotcha. So um Did they do any like bro y stuff between Rollins and Reigns? Yes, they did. They teased a uh, a power bomb. They were going to try and power bomb uh, Braun Strowman, and uh, he went to lift him up and all that. And uh, I forgot what happened, but it ended up getting like broken up. So um, save that for the pay per view. Yeah. So, and that's that's another thing. That's one of the uh, questions that I had. Would uh, okay. So obviously Roman Reigns is not getting the response that Vince McMahon had initially intended due to the whole Royal Rumble fiasco with Daniel Bryan uh, a couple years ago. Uh, they've, they've tried pushing it down the throats of everybody. Everyone just pushed it back, said, no, nope, we're not going to cheer this guy. I'm sorry, he's not going to be our man. The crowd seemed to pop quite a bit last week as well as this week with the teasing and the tension between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. So my question to you, and obviously we're probably not going to see it at least anytime soon because Dean Ambrose is on SmackDown. Would reforming the Shield get fans to cheer Roman Reigns the way that Vince wants them to again? Or for the first time? Mm, Only if it's... Organic? Uh, only if it's like truly about all three of them. If they tried to make him like the focal point of it, mm-hmm. I don't think it would work. But I don't think you could make him the focal point anymore. Yeah, I think the only way that I think they've all like outgrown that like the a position on a team to the mm-hmm. point where you couldn't just put them in slots. Yeah. It would have to be like before it was like the shield in the sense that here are three guys who like make up a team, but mm-hmm. now that it now would be more like an evolution thing where it's like, like all name guys, like making like a super before it was like, they were like a unit, but if they did it again, it'd be like a super team, you know, now they're the sword. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, attacking all who stands in their path. Um, yeah, that was something that did cross my mind because, you know, the crowd is reacting to this, um, you know, with, with Roman being like, you know, you still stab me in the back, but there is that history. Rollins is in the process of turning face. Uh, and it's one of those things that Rollins is telling the story of, I am the most hated person in this locker room. Like, no one likes me. 
the authority hates my guts, uh, nobody trusts me, and I get it. Like, I totally get it. Uh, and now you have Roman Reigns going, well, wait a second, you just you saved me uh, last week when Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho were attacking me. You know, maybe there is that redeeming quality in you. Maybe you can be saved. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I I think they'll at least tease it a little bit longer. Maybe we'll see a tag match featuring these two pairing up one more time because I know that they were the tag champions while Dean Ambrose was the United States champion. So I mean, it would it would write itself on that on that aspect. Yeah. Um, would they come out to the Shield music? Or you know, hmm. through the crowd, no. But you know, I mean, Roman, he's got the the shield music, anyways. Yeah. But um, I don't know. That was just something that popped in my head, and I, I thought we'd uh, talk a little bit about that. Um, let's see, what else was there? Moving to SmackDown, um, Breezango defeats the Vaude Villains, so that they, so they are in the uh, the tag match at Survivor Series, the okay. five on five team. Uh, Naomi defeats Natalia. Uh, Carmella came out, and Nikki was, I think, I think Nikki was on uh, commentary, and so they brawled. It caused a distraction for Natalia. Naomi won with the roll up. Uh, Baron Corbin got injured with after, and then Kalisto attacked. Um, what I thought was going to be the main event because I could have sworn I heard uh, Morrow say it is our main event tonight. Becky Lynch going up against Alexa Bliss. Unfortunately, I didn't get to catch this matchup. Um, but people were saying that it was a pretty, pretty solid matchup. Becky Lynch gets the win, and apparently there was some controversy that Alexa Bliss had her foot on the rope while she was tapping out to the uh, to the arm the disarmer, and so that could possibly set up for a TLC matchup yeah, uh, between the two. So, um, so we'll have to see. One other thing for SmackDown, um, they added a fourth person to the commentary table tom phillips is now on the table todd todd phillips whatever all right jericho felipe <laughs> all right all right, all right jericho. <laughs> you know what he just made the list um <laughs> i really thought it was tom <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's todd well, it might be Maybe I'm fucking up. Maybe I'm the Jericho. Todd Phillips. Tom, whoever, Felipe. There's some French for you. So, um, yeah. So now we have four people to cover a two-hour show. Overkill? Absolutely. Well, it, might it be because Ronaldo's probably going to do the 205 too, so they may, like, ease up his load on SmackDown. Mm. They, like, like, they may, do you know how they used to swap halfway through the show, like, commentary and stuff? Might it be one Our, of those? Yeah, I remember the uh, WCW days whenever they did that. And Tanae would always call the cruiserweight matches. Fuck I, you, it is Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the asshole here. I apologize, Tom. That's all right. I'm sure he'll forgive you if he ever listens to the show. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. So, yeah, maybe we will see like hour one, hour two commentary. Uh, probably not. It's just going to be four hour, four people on there. It's a lot of people to talk over each that other. That is. Especially sharing that one table. Three was plenty. Four is overkill. And then you're going to have guest commentators like Nikki Bella showing up. It's like, Jesus. It's a lot. How many more people can they fit on this table? Um, Kurt Hawkins got his first win. I didn't see it, but he defeated <laughs> Apollo Crews. Oh, man. Yeah. Apparently, it's a bummer for Crews. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he went for like a move off the top rope, missed, and Cruz, or Kurt Hawkins got the win. Um, they had a, a tag match between the Wyatt family featuring Randy Orton going up against Dean Ambrose, Kane, and James Ellsworth. And uh, backstage, there was a funny segment where Ellsworth is talking to Dean Am- Ambrose, and he's like, dude, we're a team, and now we've got four hands. Like, we're unstoppable. Uh, and he goes, just think about it. James Ellsworth and Dean Ambrose. James and Dean. Hey, James Dean, that can be our tag team name. And, you know, going with it, and it was pretty funny. And then Kane shows up, and Kane's like, uh, or Ellsworth is like, hey, do you have any advice for me? And Kane goes, don't tag in. (laughs) Nice. So um, I didn't get to catch the match, but Wyatt Family featuring Randy Orton end up getting the win. Hmm. So I guess he's rolling with it now. I don't know. 
It seems so out of place. Uh, and I'm mean, not just saying that just because he doesn't have the full-fledged beard, but it just seems so out of place. I mean, I imagine this is only until their next pay-per-view where it's a SmackDown pay-per-view. Yeah. You think they're going to do a roadblock before the Royal Rumble? I thought I heard something. I also heard that they're going to reduce the number of pay-per-views they did next year. God. I would like that. Oh, that's just a rumor. I don't know. I, would, I hope so. Because that's a lot. That's a lot of time to put in. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't get your hopes that it's going to be like <laughs> greatly reduced or anything. But Yeah. Like, I'm okay with an occasional one. Like, NXT, they do just fine. They do four a year. Boom. Done. So they do it before. I think they do more than four a year now. Oh, maybe five. They, they started out quarterly, but now yeah. I think they do it before every... Well... It's not even ever a major pay per view. It's they sort of like every other major pay per view, yeah. like SummerSlam and Survivor Series. And, yeah. Wait, uh, do they only do four? Maybe they maybe they do only do four a year. It feels mm-hmm. like they've sort of picked up the the schedule. Though they might have gone up to like five this because year because they're doing one before Survivor Series and going to do one before we assume before the Rumble. Right. Well, that would be the start of the new year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but they did. They're doing one before Survivor Series. They did one before SummerSlam. That was Brooklyn. They did WrestleMania, which is Dallas. I think they did one before the Rumble. Okay, you're right. Okay, so only four. Maybe. They might have done one extra one. It felt like they picked up the schedule. Yeah. I don't know. They might have, but uh, that's all that's popping off in my head. Um, And I certainly am looking forward to the NXT show that's going to be in San Antonio. I'm looking forward to when the tickets go on sale for that. Um, Yeah, that was pretty much it for SmackDown. So... Crazy stuff. Hope you enjoyed that. You're listening to an exclusive interview on WNS. Okay, folks, joining us on the show this week, it is Martin Casaus, also known as Marty the Moth Martinez from Lucha Underground. Martin, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, brother. How you doing? Uh, doing great. For all things Marty the Moth Martinez, you can follow him on Twitter at Martin Casaus. You can also f- check him out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Martin Casaus. And you can catch him on Lucha Underground Wednesday nights on the L Ray Network. So make sure you check your local listings for that. We've been following it, loving the show. So we're very happy happy to have you on this week. I right, appreciate you having me on, man. Now, you were actually you were introduced into the world, to the wrestling world nationally through WWE's Tough Enough back in 2011 and you actually became one of the favorites to win the whole thing, but unfortunately you had to leave due to injury. Could you take us through the emotions you experienced while you were there on the show, when you were injured, your recovery time and your return to the ring? Oh uh, man, that was a roller coaster. Um so you're going for your dream contract. You're going to be a wrestler to be full time, something everybody loves to do. And uh, I was doing pretty well. Um, it was halfway through the show, um, and honestly, looking at the competition, I knew I was going to be the winner of the show. Um, and uh, some fate have it when my ankle randomly broke. I have no idea how or why. None of the doctors do either. Um, so we went to the hospital. And uh, the cameras had to stop rolling because of the hospital. But, yeah, that was pretty freaking sad for me. I won't lie. That was, I was doing so well. And then it gets pulled out from under me. Um, and that was – that definitely took a hit. And I might have – you know, I'm a man. But <laughs> I might have shed a tear or two in the hospital. <laughs> well, sure. It was a dream that was going away. So, um, yeah, that was – it was intense. Um I, what they didn't show is that my ankle broke. Uh, we actually did three more drills, and then uh, before I actually, they made me go away. Um, I did about three more drills on the one leg, and then Bill DeMott set us all down, yelled at us because it was just a rough day of practice that day. And then they pulled me aside and said, I need you to go to the hospital. I said, I don't want to because I do. If I go to the hospital, you guys aren't going to let me come back if it's mm-hmm. broke. And, uh, the way they convinced me to going was I will only go to the hospital if you is if you let me take this up no matter what it is and come back and finish this competition. Absolutely sure. Yeah. They lied. Of course. They lied. <laughs> 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 so I went to the hospital, um, had a sad moment, spent overnight, um, just I had about five doctors um, for second opinions. 
Um, just trying to find anyone that will say you, you're good to go for the next five weeks. Um, then I even approached the doctor and said, can you shoot it up with something so that I don't fill it for five weeks? And uh, they wouldn't do it. Hmm. I guess that's illegal or something. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it was rough. Then uh, um, actually they took me from the, I think it was actually, the, it, they took me to a different hotel. They didn't take me back to the house. Um, and the ne- very next time I saw everybody was when I went into a van, a production van, and they said, hey, so you're going to hang up your belt there, um, and uh, you're going to give Steve Austin a belt so you can't go anymore. I'm like, um, all right, well, that's a rude way to start the day. Um, <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so that's what they did. I went in there, and uh, Steve let me hang up my own belt, which is awesome. Um, and then they gave me two uh, screws in my leg or my ankle here. That's going to stay with me forever. So that's my souvenir from WWE <laughs> Tough Enough. Thank you very much, WWE. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I was supposed to be out for, I think, six months or something like that, six months. I, I came back a couple months early just because I wanted to get back in the ring. If, when your whole life is you're so close to getting what you want out of life and it pulls out from under you, you hate just to sit there and dwell on it. So uh, that was kind of a long process for me. But it actually made me actually a lot mentally tough than I thought. Definitely. So, it was good. I think everything happens for a reason, and I end up at Lucha Underground, so I'm all right with it. Absolutely. We definitely want to talk about your Lucha Underground, but I do have one more uh, WWE-related question. Before you got called into uh, Lucha Underground, were you ever contacted uh, by WWE to, to maybe be given another tryout? Did they contact you any time after that? I, I was, yeah. I was contacted actually about three years later. Three years, wow. just because I was still doing stuff um, and going and being an extra on stuff. They actually sent me down to the WWE Performance Center. That place is amazing. Um, and uh, I had a tryout, and they, they said, when I was down there, the tryouts there are, are ridiculous, I think. Basically, they try and break you, and they don't do any sort of wrestling. They just make you do a million things so you get tired and so that you quit. Mm -hmm. I don't quit. (laughs) So um, we went there, and the very last day we had a promo, and then they said, all right, we're going to have a couple people doing some matches. And they went by, like, I like you, I like you, uh, let's do a match with you. Martin, we already know what you can do, so you don't worry about it. And uh, I'm like, well, if you already know what I can do, why the hell am I here then? (laughs) Um... So either hire me or don't give me a tryout. So <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. But I did have a tryout there. Um, it, I was, it's a great chance to be at the Performance Center. That place is amazing. If you ever get a chance to go, that place is amazing. Make sure you do. Um, but, yeah, I did get a tryout in 2014, 2015, something like that in the summer. And right about that time, Lou Chonagano was knocking on my door. Um, they actually contacted me about a year before the show came out, too. So. Uh, right about that time. That's very cool, you know, to, uh, to find out that they approached you on that. So whenever they came to you, did they say, hey, we've got this character, we think it'll be great for you, or did they kind of work with you and, and you kind of came up with some part of parts of the character, or was was it sort of a 50-50, or was it more of their, hey, we've got this character, we think you'd be great for it? Actually, they didn't even, by the time they approached me, they didn't even have an idea of the show. All they idea they knew, or any sort of structure to the show yet, they contacted me about a year before. It was one of the first guys contacted. All they knew was we're bringing a Lucha Libre to America. We'd like you to be on a show. That's pretty much all we know. Are you in? I said yes. So, nice. <laughs> and then uh, it was Eric Van Wagen. Um, he worked with me on Tough Enough. And uh, so I just kept getting in contact with him every couple of months. Like, hey, is this thing still happen? He's like, yep, yep, still in the works, still in the works. <laughs> and then we got there. And uh, it was funny because they had no idea what to do with me. Um, they just know. They just said, "Hey, you're. I'm not quite sure what to do with you, but we want you on the show because you're entertaining." <laughs> um, so I actually had my first match as a magician. I was Magnificent Martin on, <laughs> on the second match ever at Lucha Underground that never made it to TV. Nice. So I was wearing a shower curtain. <laughs> but but you got to be a part of history wearing that shower curtain. <laughs> Yeah, straight. Yeah, it was a blast. I was the second match. I always, I wish I was the first, but I was the second. Famous B and uh, somebody else was a, 
Uh, Big B Boy was the first match, but I was the second match in Lucha Underground history. They had to warm up the crowd for you. That's right. Yeah, you know, kind of <laughs> warm them up. <laughs> so then you later became what is now known Marty the Moth Martinez, uh, and your character has evolved so much. I saw I saw comments on uh, on you know YouTube videos of saying this is what the the Bray Wyatt character should be like, or you know this is what this particular <laughs> character should be like, and you know you've se- you've seemed to found your niche and you've you've honed your craft. Tell us about Marty the Moth Martinez. Like where did this character come from in your mind? Um, well, they came up to me and they approached me with the character, hey, you're, you're going to be part of this moth tribe. It's going to be one of the seven Aztec tribes. We just want you to be com- comedic relief. Just entertain us, make us laugh. I'm like, all right. And that's pretty much all that they really gave us. And then uh, literally during rehearsals before my first TV match against Prince Puma, I was messing with Melissa and... I don't know if I was whispering sweet nothings in her ear or what I was doing, but I was just messing with her. And they're like, ooh, could you, could you do that? Could you actually flap your arms like that, kind of like a moth, and just stand co- even closer to her, make her super uncomfortable? Like, do you want me to do that on TV today? Like, they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure. Wait, you will? Yeah, yeah, totally I will. All right, do it. Let's see what happens. So that's how the whole – it was actually – so that whole thing with me and Melissa started out as a joke with me messing with her during rehearsals because I like to goof off. <laughs> um, and then uh, I knew I was good at comic relief. I can I can make people laugh at me. Um, and uh, but I know that usually the comedic relief doesn't get to hold championships. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went and talked to Vampiro and said, "How can I still be funny?" and still make this work so that I can have a title in my future. And uh, he said, well, let's make it darker. And if you're going to talk to, if you're going to try and make anything darker, that pair is the man to go to. Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, that's where it evolved. So then I just started um, using some of my acting classes and stuff like that, doing some research on serial killers um, and horror movies. And then just kind of taking that aspect and that's where you saw that switch from season one where they told me I'm going to kidnap Sexy Star. And uh, that's where you see this whole darkness coming about from the goofy smiley that you saw in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Childish in the beginning, but then you find out his darker past. Exactly. He's got to have some layers to some characters. And one of the things about, about your career so far in Lucha Underground is you've gotten to have one of those standout matches. You know, there are certain matches in Lucha Underground that people constantly go back and talk about. Like, if you're going to watch Lucha Underground, this is one of the matches. Your match with Killshot, the Weapons of Mass Destruction match, I think is one of those matches. What was your thought before and after that particular match? Um, before, it was funny because at the very end of season three, they're going to end me and kill shot in a different manner. They're just going to just give us a regular quick match and just move on to something different. But uh, me and Shane, Shane's kill shot. Uh, so we really enjoy working with each other. I think we have something here with the dog tags. Give us a chance. Can we, can we blow this off? Right. And uh, this is one thing I love so much about Lucha Underground is that the list, the, the writers and the producers, everyone said, okay, let's give them a chance. Hmm. And so we rocked, we went with it, and uh, it turned out very well. Um, and the funny thing is, before that match, they said, hey, we're giving you the ball today. So we're not saying we're not going to give you the ball ever again, but this is going to be your, your first main event on this show. This is going to be your, you're here, and this match could take you here. So no pressure. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, no, thanks. Um, so me and Coach Shot got together, and uh, that match happened. And honestly, that was probably probably the highlight of my career. Is after that match was over, um, just because the crowd was eating it up the whole time. But then the pressure was gone once once uh, I was on top of that ladder. Mm. Um, I knew I was going to be okay. I, I was more worried for his safety than mine, breaking his ankles on my chest. Yeah. Um, that last move off the ladder, that was super fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, I think that was honestly one of the biggest, the most emotional moment for me in my career. Um, because after he got sent away and he had a celebration, we went off air 
um, the fans were cheering me and the writers came out and were clapping for me. And I think that was a big, okay, I did what the writers need. So um, I'm very happy with this. And honestly, that match was very fun for me. And uh, I love that match. Phil Scott is an amazing guy to rest. Very cool. Do you ever go back and, uh, and watch the matches that you compete in? Once they come out, I immediately watch them <laughs> just because I want to critique myself. Um, I always critique or I always tape my matches every single time I have a match and critique, so I always want to get better, especially at Lucha Underground where with me, I can do all these cool flips. I can do stuff like this, but people care less about that instead of they care when I look and Melissa Santos in a very <laughs> disturbing manner. I think so, she's just playing hard to get. <laughs> I think so, too. She's going to give up one of these days. <laughs> she's going to give up. I'll get her. I'll get her. Don't you worry. I love the, the fact that the uh, the crowd has, uh, in, a, in a weird way, they've accepted you. They're, they're chanting creepy bastard at you. They're saying no means no. Uh, you know, they, they say in wrestling, as long as you're getting a reaction, you're doing something right. So for you to get that kind of a reaction, it's got to be good. The people at the temple, they're so amazing, man. And the, the, they are a character on their own. Um, yeah, the second I go out now, it's creepy bastard and... Uh, <laughs> No means no, um, and kill moth or something. Kill moth or kill the moth. Kill the moth. <laughs> that was newer. It's amazing. Um, and one one thing that I'm actually quite proud of that the writers talked to me that they're excited about is that most of the bad guys in Lucha Underground still get cheered, mm-hmm. but nobody cheers the moth. They don't like the moth. <laughs> Legit, they hate the moth. So they uh, one of the writers said that the uh, Marty the moth has zero redeeming qualities in him <laughs> whatsoever. So, that therefore, the fans will never cheer me. And I'm 100% okay with that. <laughs> and so, then, you, then you throw in your sister Mariposa in there as well, and it's just all kinds of chaos. Oh, there's going to be some fun for this season. You're going to see it. Um, with me and Mariposa, yeah, it's a fun relationship that we're going to explore a little bit in Season 3 here. Um, Melissa is an amazing wrestler, so it just, it's great. I have an awesome tag team partner, an awesome sister in, in the show. Um, I'm pretty stoked for everybody to see. I, I kind of wish it was just like on Netflix or something where you can just throw it all at you at once. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it definitely built suspense having to wait seven days. And it was one of those things where after the first season, there was such an outcry, such an outpour. We need a season two. And then we were gifted a season two. And not only that, it's like, hey, you got season two. Now you're getting season three and possibly future seasons to come. So, you know, I'll I'll happily wait an extra week just so I can uh, check out the next episode. (laughs) And rumors about season four and touring for the rest of the year. So, yeah. Speaking of touring, you guys got to go on the road and uh, y'all were fortunate enough to or we were fortunate enough to have you guys show up at Houston, which is where we got to see you perform against Paul London. So that was a lot. That was a fun match. Oh, my gosh. And he got with him and the rabbit tried that. That's a fun (laughs) thing to play with. So you got his goofiness with the rabbit tribe and my goofiness with the moth. I really hope I get to wrestle him a lot more at Lucha Underground because Paul London is just an amazing man, an amazing wrestler. Inside the the Lucha Underground temple, is there anyone that you would like to face that's on your sort of list of of people you'd like to face that's not a champion at the moment? It's not a champion at the moment. Paul's definitely up there. I'd like to wrestle Son of Havoc. Mm. I have... I, he was on WWE Tough Enough with me. Mm-hmm. Um, he came down to Utah and wrestled for my uh, for a company down here, but I didn't get to wrestle him because I was still out with my ankle. So after all these years, I've yet to wrestle my buddy uh, Matt. So I would love to wrestle Son of Havoc um, and maybe just throw him around by that beard of his. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, who in the wrestling world, past or present, would you like to have a match with? I always say um, one of my dream matches would be Stone Cold Steve Austin just because of WWE Tough Enough, and obviously Steve Austin is Steve Austin. <laughs> um, Shawn Michaels is the man I, that, I, that actually got me, that kind of taught me what wrestling was, like how he, how he went out there and he had so much fun out there. You could tell he was having fun. Um, that is someone that, that would be a dream match for me, Shawn Michaels. Um, but presently, uh, people that are in the ring right now, there's so many people out there that I would like to get my hands on at least twice. I always say the first time is for fun. The second time, you really get to see what you can do. 
Hmm. So um, I would love to wrestle Matt Cross um, and Shawn Michaels, um, and I'd love another match with Paul London. Try to check out that Rabbit Tribe. Very cool. Um, now, for a lot of wrestlers out there in the world, wrestling is their life. It is the only thing that they have to to fall on. And one thing that fans might not know about you is that you're not just a wrestler. You're also a stockbroker. How on earth does that happen? <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm a stockbroker. I own two businesses, and I'm an actor as well. So, um, trying to stay busy. Um, that happened because actually, when I was 18, 17, something like that, I was working at a bank just because it was a better job than a restaurant. <laughs> um, I was playing sports back then, and my friend who got a job at the brokerage firm that I work at, I'm not allowed to say the name on it for some reason, um, but the brokerage from I worked at, she actually sat me down and forced me to apply for that position. And uh, it ended up getting me into the brokerage firm. So I had my Series 7 licenses, my Series 63 licenses. Uh, a girl that forced me to actually come to the stockbroker job actually didn't pass her test, so she couldn't actually stay at this job, <laughs> this job here. So that was kind of fun. But um, I'm literally actually at the office right now at the brokerage firm. Um, trying to help people retire. That's amazing. Like what? When you first told your coworkers, "Hey, I have to go wrestle," what was their reactions? You have to go do what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like high school wrestling? I'm like, no, no, no. I like high school wrestling. I wear a lot less spandex this wrestling than I do. Do they ever come out to um, to some of your matches and uh, and show their support? Um, some have. Um, some loved it. Some were like, oh, that's too violent for my kids. I'm in Utah, so it is what it is. <laughs> um, but one thing that has been a constant is uh, a lot of people that work here, this is all they have. They have their job, and they go mm-hmm. home to their families. So I asked them about their weekends. I said they hang out with their kids and mm-hmm, have picnics. And then they asked me about my weekends. They always ask me how my weekends were right? because it's, <laughs> Usually a lot more eventful <laughs> than working a nine to five job and taking care of family. So how was your weekend? Well, I watched some football. How about you? Oh, I got thrown off of a ladder through a table. You know, uh, it's casual. Exactly. <laughs> I had twenty thousand people in Mexico. You know, throwing beer at me, flipping <laughs> me off, and it was a blast. It was great. So you yeah, know, it's, it's definitely um, some fun stories, and everyone here has been pretty awesome about it. Um, but it definitely, and it, I even told so close to you, Austin, and he says, what the hell are you doing wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> You're a stockbroker. You're smarter than that. Like, well, I don't want to be a stockbroker my whole life. So that's why I'm kicking ass all over the country. I can just imagine someone walking into your business for the first time, sitting down at, across the desk from you, noticing all the bruises on your face and going, I don't know if I should go to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you should have seen the other guy. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's been fun. Um, and uh, it's actually, it's brought a lot of opportunities because then I, I can do stuff. I'm not just a full-time wrestler, which I don't know if I would love just to be a full-time wrestler because I don't think it pays as much as uh, I'd like to make. I have big plans for my future, so millionaire by 40. There you go. So, hypothetical question. Um, if the WWE were to come calling and they offered you the uh, the full-time gig there, would you still do your stockbroking? Can you do your stockbroking job on the side? Or would you, I mean, because I know the WWE is a demanding uh, schedule, being on the road about 300 days a year. Would you be able to still do that? If I ever went to WWE, nope, you are a WWE superstar. That is all you do. Uh, you're pretty much not allowed to do pretty much anything else. Um, and you don't even have time to do anything else. Um, but if the WWE were to come to me right now and say we have this uh, uh, full-time gig for you, I would just let them know. Um, I appreciate that. It's about time. And uh, just like you guys told me, we're going to wait for a future time. Mm. I'm here at Lucha Underground, and I love it. As long as Lucha Underground has their doors open, I'm going to wave that flag like I've never waved a flag before, so 
as long as Lucha is around, I'm going to be there, even if WWE didn't offer me anything. Very cool. And then speaking of Lucha Underground, you can catch it Wednesdays on the El Rey Network. Make sure to check your local listings. At least put it on your DVR or download the seasons on iTunes now that it's available on there. For everything Martin Casals, follow him on Twitter at Martin Casals or Facebook.com slash Martin Casals. Marty the Moth Martinez, it has certainly been a, uh, a pleasure. We appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a blast. I appreciate the plugs. Um, and, again, just for my fans, follow me. Um, follow this podcast. Uh, follow me. Write me messages. with. But long, main story short, long story short, sorry I'm sick, so I have my voice right now. <laughs> but thank you, everybody who are watching the show and who support without wrestling fans with just two dudes rolling around in spandex. So thank you very much, wrestling fans. Keep being vocal. Let's keep Lucha going for a very long time and keep supporting indie wrestling. Awesome. All right, man. Well, we appreciate it. (laughs) No problem. Thank you much for having me on, Daniel. And now some hot topics for you all. We certainly appreciate Martin coming on to the show, talking a little uh, Lucha Underground, all that good stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment, what you thought about the interview, and more. Uh, but we do have some hot topics. We also have one more debate, uh, or one more questionable thing that I'd like to bring up. And that is the rumor going around um, surrounding Hulk Hogan. Uh, there was news, TMZ broke or whatever, Um I forget what her name is. What's his daughter's name? Brooke. Brooke. Yeah, Brooke Hogan. Um, apparently, she said that WWE is in talks of bringing Hulk Hogan back to WrestleMania. So, the question is, should WWE bring back Hulk Hogan after the comments that he made, uh, everything that's been going on with the lawsuits, You know, should he be forgiven for the stuff that he said, has there been enough time for people to forgive or is it still a very touchy sensitive subject well what i would assume is this little who who videoed her asking i believe it was tmz okay they're co-opted media from for wwe wwe leaks their shit to them so my assumption would be this is like a test the waters like or are people going to freak you out? Yeah. And if they do... Nah, that could make sense. If they do, then we pull back and we don't do it. And mm-hmm. if people are just like, like... No, oh, she's crazy. Don't trust her. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I mean, honestly, it's not that hard to pull back from... Brooke Hogan said this one thing on camera. Yeah. We just don't ever talk about it again. Then mm-hmm. if they say we're bringing Hogan back, then that's a little bit bigger of a deal to pull back from. So they've leaked shit to TMZ before, so I consider them co-opted media. Yeah. So... I would say this is just a test run because before this they did the they put him back in that video package for the network after yeah. point. so it's like they're incrementally like seeing like are people it's gonna subliminal freak? it's like are people gonna freak out if we do this no they're like did I just hear him say brother yeah I think I did so I would assume they're just testing the waters and seeing how the fans react true yeah um and the wrestling crowd they are very forgiving you know. It's not necessarily an out of sight, out of mind when you've got legends in wrestling. So I'm sure he'll be, he'd be welcomed back with open arms, but it's just one of those things where it's like eh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard questionable. For, it's hard for me to look at him the same way. I yeah. mean, I don't. I it's not just hard for I like I don't look at him the same way. Mm-hmm. But uh, that doesn't mean they're not going to do it. Yeah, he. I th- there was a, when it was fresh in the news. I felt like if there's no coming back from this, but now I feel like oh, it's only a matter of time before they, they mm-hmm. bring him back. They'll just say yeah, he was just wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, he said things he shouldn't have, but I don't know. There's still still certain things you just don't say. Um, so yeah, I'm sure the fans there'll be a lot of fans that'll be happy to see him back. Well, more than you just don't and, say, but hopefully people yeah. just don't actually feel that way. Yeah, instead of just it. like. I, Instead of like wanting people to watch what they say, hopefully just people don't fucking feel that way. Yeah. Just be nice. Be nice to one another. Yeah, just be fucking nice. God. <laughs> just be fucking nice to one another. Um So now talking about some hot topics. Um, you know, we talk, we started the show talking a little bit about politics. Um <laughs> we do have some politics stuff to talk about. Rhino Unfortunately, lost his bid in Michigan for uh, for a seat in the House of Representatives. I think he had thirty six percent of the votes. Mm. Still, not too bad. I mean, in in politics, 
talk. That's a landslide victory for his opponent, but still that he that he got some votes is is pretty good. Um, Matt Hardy reportedly, according to his Twitter, was informed that he received presidential votes. Apparently, people wrote him in instead of Harambe, uh, and he sent out a tweet saying it, how flattering and delightful it it was that people voted for him to be president. I mean, A, that sounds like a fucking work that he's just like going with, and B, don't depress me that people wasted their fucking votes with that kind of shit when we are facing what we're facing now. Yeah. Let's um, just move on. <laughs> let's move let's on. move on from that. Uh, Joey Styles announced that he was blocked on Twitter by TNA, or he was blocked by TNA on Twitter uh, for saying, I predict FightNet. Uh, elects to move TNA to Toronto without Dixie Carter. Say that one more time. He said, I predict that, is it Fight.net or is it just Fight.net? Fight Network. Okay, Fight Network. I predict that they elect to move TNA from Orlando or mm-hmm. from wherever it is. Universal Studios, I believe now, that they've been doing their show. I don't even know. Somewhere around. Wherever. Wherever they've been doing it, they're moving to Toronto and they're leaving Dixie Carter behind. Well, I thought that the last, and again, I've sort of been out of the loop for a while, but uh, the last I heard was she still retains like 5% ownership or whatever, even with they, even with them buying out. Yeah, I heard she would lose a lot of her power, but they would keep her maybe as an on-air character. Well, it's basically just like she's, she's saving a little face by staying with the company. She's not really going to be in, like... In charge, she really saving face by staying with the company, though. In her, in her own opinion, like yeah. it's better than like losing the company altogether. Yeah, she she can be like, I'm part of this. Uh, how TNA is mm-hmm. still going? Not like, I, you know, I I got bought out because I'm incompetent. <laughs> Certainly not the case. Um, in some happy news, Kurt Angle and his wife welcome baby number five to the family. A lot of babies. That is a lot of babies. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully some uh, future gold medalists up in there. Uh, speaking of babies, Robbie E., former guest on the show, he and his wife gave birth to twins. That's a lot of babies. That's too. a lot of babies. That's <laughs> a lot of babies at once. That's a lot to go from zero to two. Yeah. Uh, so best of luck with that. Um, uh, SmackDown's 900th episode coming up, and Edge and The Undertaker are scheduled to appear. So that'll be a nice surprise. It'll be. It's been a while since we saw Edge in the uh, WWE ring, so look forward to seeing what he has up and uh, for plans. It hasn't been that long. Mm. When they were doing the Edge and Christian yeah, show, it was like he was. I around. didn't watch that though, so I don't count it. I'm just saying he was around, not yeah. just on that. He was on. Raw yeah, he did have the interaction yeah. with with New Day. He and did all the that. Uh, him and Christian did the podcast too with yeah. Stone Cold. Um, but yeah, so Edge and The Undertaker uh, expected to appear on the 900th episode. And while we're talking on numbers of episodes, episode 300 of our show is going to be next week. So you still have a little bit of time to get your uh, audio clips into us or whatever you want to send our way. Just send it to podcastcrew at yahoo.com. So there you go. We might have it featured on the show. Just send a little message or something like that. Uh, Justin Roberts, former announcer for WWE, has announced that he plans to release a book entitled The Best Seat in the House, a backstage pass to my journey as a WWE wrestler, or announcer, excuse me. Uh, It's set to release in April of 2017. So, if that is something that intrigues you, there you go. Um, Injury reports. Shelton Benjamin announced uh, on his Twitter that he has uh, no timetable for a return to action following his torn rotator cuff injury, but he is in the process of rehab. I wonder if they pulled the deal after that. I hope not. I'd, I'd still like to see him compete, but yeah, that is kind of a, well, you do seem accident prone, so we're just going to just gonna take that. Just seems like really bad timing. Yeah, it's the worst timing. Um and uh, WWE legend Vader, he was involved in a car crash. Man, I saw pictures. He looks pretty messed up. Yeah, I have bruises all over his face and uh, black eye, both two black eyes. Um, he claims he's okay despite losing consciousness for 40, for 35 minutes and the fact that his car rolled and stopped upside down. So 
But he is okay. He's alive. What kind and... of car do you think Vader drives? <laughs> Man, I would hope something kind of big because he's a big dude. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how he lives his lifestyle. Yeah, it's true. Like I could, I could see him driving something sensible, and it just, and it just flipped. But I mean, there's no telling. I was more like thinking like he's a big man. I wonder. I hope his car is not too small or something. Yeah, you can just imagine like. Yeah. Him all scrunched up, the wheel right in his chest. But yeah, glad he's okay. Um, hope he's you know doesn't have any long term damages from that, uh, especially losing consciousness. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for us this week. So thanks to everyone for listening. We appreciate you tuning in. You can always submit your questions on our YouTube channel, WNS Video, also our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com and WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. Subscribe to our show on iTunes, Beyond Pod, Player.fm, Stitcher, and Satchel by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. Yes, and you can follow the podcast on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Daniel is at WNS underscore Daniel. Tyler is at Tyler underscore a bear. And hopefully we'll have like a more regular <laughs> episode 300 with Tyler back and yeah. me having actually watched the product <laughs> and big old celebrations. What it's going to be. We're going to have some fun. I hope. So, uh, again, big thank you to our guest this week, Martin Casals from Lucha Underground, Marty the Moth. Go and check him out. Make sure you check out Lucha Underground as well. Uh, for the podcast crew, I am Daniel Heron. I'm Doug. And we will catch you all next week for episode 300.